we, we've been talking about trans species archetypes, right? So we talked about this mama, who is representation of the mother archetype, and she is so motherly that she's got three eggs under her, and she won't move even though she's being covered with snow. And very likely she would sit there until she froze to death before she would move. One of the archetypes that Dr. Jung talks about is the mandala. It's a big deal. Well, let me just give you a, a description of it. Or at the end of the book of Job, Ezekiel has a vision. And the Ezekiel vision is a mandala, the type of symbolic image that marks this, the peak experience of the individuation process as it is observed in psychotherapy. Okay, so a mandala is a circular image, typically, um, and uh, you see examples in churches everywhere. Uh, for example, the rose window in the Cathedral of Chartres is a mandala, but they're everywhere. They're in uh, Westminster Abbey, they're, they're just everywhere. And what one of the things that Dr. Jung showed through his lifetime is that the mandala appears um, everywhere in human culture, in every human culture. So I don't want you to um, look at the latter parts of these pages that I'm passing you, um, but just look at the first one, which is, which, which is an example of a mandala. So Debbie brought this to my attention this week, and this is an example of a transspecies mandala. Can you create, can you imagine what species created this? Penicillin, I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> okay, so this is the mandala that's created. This is what I'm talking about. Okay, so turn to page two, and you'll see in the middle of the mandala is a fish. This is a five inch long fish called the puffer fish. In Japanese, this is called the fugu fish. Okay, and, and, and it's a delicacy in Japan. It's a Pardon? Cooked right, right? Yeah, it has to be cooked right because it's poisonous. You know, if you, if you eat the fugu fish liver, you die. Okay. It's only uh, five inches long, this fish. But this fish, turn the page, creates this mandala. It does it, if you look at the last page then. Okay, so here's... Here's a diver looking at one of the mandalas with a fish in the center of it. Oh, yeah. And then on the last page, we have an example of it. And in the top picture, a picture of the fish actually working on the mandala. And he works on this. This is a, this is a mating ritual. And he works on this thing seven by 24 for seven to nine days and he creates this perfect circle mandala, which is um, seven feet in diameter. Seven feet in diameter, okay? And the purpose of this is that the female fugu fish then comes and lays her eggs at the center of the mandala, and then he fertilizes the eggs, okay? And so, when, when Deb showed me this, I, it just blew my mind away because, um, you know, the people, there, there are many videos of this, so you can go on YouTube and put in Pufferfish Mandala, and you'll see several videos of it, and they're very short, they're like two-minute videos or something, but they, they show the fish actually doing it, and it's just mind-blowing to think that a five-inch fish can create this work of art 
that's seven feet in diameter, and it's perfect. It's it's geomet it's geometrically perfect. Serve as a sensor surface for the. Well, it does serve a de defensive purpose too. They said that in, in, in one of the, you know, if you look at the writings under the YouTube videos, it, it does say that it serves a defensive purpose also. Um, but right. Uh, enemy would have to negotiate these and everything too. Right. You know, you you have to say if. If every human culture believed that a mandala was a representation of the self, the uh, transpersonal self, the God image, and now we see it, trans, you know, trans species in this, I can't imagine what. Dr. Jung would have thought about this to see it, because because this wasn't discovered until the 1990s. Okay, there was there was a Japanese diver that used to go down. They say, oh, these are crop circles. We we've got crop circles on the bottom of the. We have crop circles on the bottom of the ocean. Right? <laughs> okay, yeah, well, we have something too. I guess. Right. It's just their little crossways. Well, yeah, who knows what the crop circles are? I mean, those are as as yet unexplained, right? But but uh, it cannot be denied that this is truly archetypal, because this creature, which is only five inches long, um, he does it by instinct, right? And, Another interesting thing is, at least in Tibetan mandalas and tankas, the inner part, so this inner circle, is called the melong, and melong means mirror. So the central deity is actually just reflecting what your own archetypal energy in particular, archetypal energy. So you can imagine the female puffer fish come along, coming along and seeing herself in some way in the center of that mandala and saying, I'm going to lay my eggs there. Mm -hmm. Or at least that's my fantasy yeah. projection. And they're, <laughs> and, and they're different. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, if the female puffer fish isn't impressed by the work of art after the nine days of effort, you know, tough. <laughs> you don't reproduce, kiddo. <laughs> she has to be impressed. I mean, yeah, there, she, are, there are cases where she will turn away. Sure. Yeah. 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 She doesn't like Monet. She's looking for go again. Huh? These are all the same. No, they're not the same. They're huh? They're so different. Yeah. yeah, if you if you look at the videos, you'll see examples of them that are very different.